and plant people haven't required permission. If they don't, not only can they be prosecuted, we can be prosecuted. And so you need to take due diligence. You have to ask who you're buying from. Are you, do you have permission to either collect these plants or grow these plants or use these plants? Because otherwise you can be tracked down and you'll be fined and prosecuted. That's Nagoya. CITES, actually I'll go on to plant health. As of December the 14th, all plants crossing into this country's border, and this is going to happen, whatever happens, whether Brexit does or doesn't go ahead or whatever, they will need a phytosanitary certificate. All plant shipment, every single one will need a phyto. Furthermore, seeds, a lot of seeds will need phytos. For example, all conifer seeds will need phytosanitary certificates because they can carry pests and disease. At a guess, same goes for lupins because they can carry virus. Um, so you'll need phytos for that. That's number one. The big thing, the real big bad gust of wind is CITES. And this is endangered animals, endangered plants. And roughly what ways works out, every single plant that is covered under CITES, whether it's endangered or red listed or whatever, will then incur, I think, a fine or a, a permit cost, which I believe is about 70 pounds, maybe 70 euros, but I think it's 70 pounds per species to cross the border so for example all cacti come under CITES so if you're buying in cacti you'll need a phytosanitary certificate you'll need an import license you'll need to give customers three days notice and for every species and I suspect cultivar because to have a cultivar from a species you need the species in the first place so I think they'll be covered as well you've got to pay £70 so if you're buying 10 different types of cacti 10 plants each you're paying £700 for those 100 plants just to bring them over plus phytos plus everything else this is going to change our industry upside down. Basically, different don't want people to bring and ship plants around. What they're worried about is xylella. We just heard only the other day, um, which would be middle of March, there's been a xylella outbreak in Portugal in the Algarve, and that came through on imported lavenders. It's really serious. It can damage food crops. Defra are paranoid about it. They want to knock out the market traders and people who don't grow their plants so they can't ship plants in. And within a few hours of the plants arriving in our markets and towns are being sold and if there's an infection the outbreak is out there so this is going to be a huge huge game changer however medium to long term i think it's going to be brilliant for the industry short term yes suddenly there'll be a lack of plants be a shortage of plants the prices will go up and demand will increase or decrease or whatever but the prices will go up and the, but what this means those of us who do grow and those of us who are ready will make a bit more money and it suddenly becomes a viable option now the problem with this industry um, in terms of nurseries, there is a huge decreasing number of nurseries. We are literally dying on the job. And when I say that, I literally do mean that. I was at Cardiff. Some poor bloke went outside to get some more seeds for his display. Had a heart attack, killed over, cut it. Bless his heart. End of story. They're low, and this is hanging the time. They're either, either retiring or I know one shouldn't laugh. But I'm trying to... We're either retiring or dying. No one's coming into this industry, um, apart from maybe a few plant nerds who love their plants so much they start a nursery not for business reasons because it's not a great business model but because they love growing plants this is really unhealthy for our industry now if we start making a bit more money people from outside the industry are going to look and go hey look i can i fancy working outdoors i don't particularly care about plants but i like working with nature i want to be outside i want to feel the sun me back i'll start a nursery but they'll bring in different mind uh skill sets and mindsets and different ways of doing things for example the industry is very, very, if I can use the word, retarded. Um, if I've been told once, I've been told a hundred times, don't put seedlings in great big pots. You need to put them in a little pot, bigger pot, bigger pot, bigger pot. I've never done that in 20 years. I've never, ever done that. I'll put tiny little baby tree seedlings into great big 20 litre pots. I've never lost one. I've lost them for other reasons, but never for rotting out. It's absolute fallacy. And it's challenging these ideas. We need to bring the industry forward. If these people start coming in in the medium to, to long term, we will get a greater diversity in nurseries, a greater diversity in plants, better quality plants. Yes, slightly more expensive, but it can only be good for the industry. And that way we can push the industry forward because the industry is really, really important for our health and for our wealth. We need gardening to keep us alive on this planet. Lovely. Well said. So if I wanted to um, extrapolate that into some scenarios. Yes. If I am a very small, if I've got a small holding, yes. I decide that I want to flog my plants at the fl farmer's market on a weekend mm -hmm. and I also want to collect some seeds mm -hmm. and sell those too. How does that affect me? And I'm thinking Nagoya for that. How does that affect me? As long as you're collecting from your own stock. Um, for example, with my plants, I'm making damn certain that everything I'm collecting from or taking cutting from 
is originally at least two years old, and that puts me out of reach from Nagoya. Does it? Is yes. that is that the time limit on that? Um, that's the safe time limit. Right. Okay. Um, so, so I'm not quite sure how fast how far it goes back, but I certainly I know if I'm anything I'm taking is more than two years old, I'm totally covered. You're safe because it's very hard to have retrospective laws. It's like saying, okay the speed limit's gone down from 70 miles an hour to 50 miles an hour, and we're going to backdate it 10 years, everybody was speeding at 70 miles, and the motorway gets nicked. You, you can't yeah. do that because at yeah. the time it wasn't illegal. So oh. for that reason, with Nagoya, you're, you, if you've got two-year-old material, you're safe. If you're buying in seeds, for example, I buy my seeds from Chili Flora, which is a company in Chile, although I don't think Chile has signed up to Nagoya. But all I need to do is email Chile and say, hey, look, have you got permission to collect these seeds and sell these seeds to me? And they'll say, yes, we have, in which case I'm covered for Nagoya and I can do what I like with them. Whether I can produce a hybrid from it or a plant breeder's rights plant from it, I don't know yet. I haven't looked into that. Mm -hmm. I suspect there may be problems with that because the copyright to that plant still belongs to Chile, for example. Yeah. But we'll see. Okay. So it depends where you're generating your material from. If it's from your own stock, yeah, you should be okay. And if I bought a um, variegated monstera and I took some, I, I layered it and took some cuttings and mm. sold them via eBay. Now, with eBay, you've got to be very, very careful. Because... I know I'm not going to hold you to this, and no, no. you know, I'm not expecting you to have all the answers because it sounds as if this is very new. It, and it is the... very complex. Yeah. People worrying. I was speaking to a cacti chap who was saying that he's thinking that with all these rule changes, all descend to eBay and people buy things illegally on eBay. It's really easy to be caught on eBay. So easy. For, I'll give you, for example, there's a neighbour of mine, you should remain nameless, she's extremely rich, I think she's worth 100, 125 million pounds, got lots of land, and she put in a glamping thing on one bit of the land. And because she's extremely rich, she's also very tight, bless her heart. So she didn't bother to get any relevant permits or permissions or what have you. Within about three, four months, they'd caught her because, of course, she had it on the website advertising glamping. And all they had to do was type in to Google glamping southeast. Oh, seven names. Right, that one's got permission. That one's got permission. That one hasn't. That one hasn't. And that one hasn't. Not knock on the door. You're Nick, my son. And the same with eBay. If, say, you're selling, for example, many hot carthenogensis, which, say, for example, is under CITES and it's endangered red list and you're not allowed to sell it. To sell it, you've got to advertise it. All they've got to do is type in Manny Hogg, Carthen Genesis, see who comes up, double-check the, the, the address of the person. Are they registered to sell it? No, they're not. You're nicked. And I'll tell you what, we'll let you off half the fine if you tell us who your customers are to we'll nick them as well. <laughs> so I would suspect you've got to be careful with doing that. Okay. Um, so with the FITO certificates, again, mm. say I'm buying, and again, I, I don't know if I am citing the right, to le- legislation here but if i'm buying yes. plants from the continent yes. so i might be a garden designer yep. imagine that mm-hmm. and i might deal with <laughs> with nurseries that are on the continent and they are shipping stuff to me yes who's responsible for checking it's got the right paperwork is it me or them um i don't know i mean that the, what I'll, I'll put a caveat here in this what i'm saying a lot of it is my opinion it's information i've gleaned from various different sources there isn't actually anybody yet who knows everything that's going on, because some of it's still being formulated, so a lot of it's guesswork. I'd, with the phytos, I don't know. Certainly you've got to make certain that you have the phytos in place. I assume the people who are selling the plants issued the phytos because they're the ones who have to have it checked because then their plant health people come and see them, check, yep, these free of the disease, free of pests, yep, here's your phyto, you can now sell these plants. Um, and you, I think you can get a licence that covers you for a couple of months so they don't have to check you every shit that was, you know, you never get anywhere. All you have to do is make certain that you have the correct documents when they come through to you. And DEFRA will check that. They've had a huge, huge staff increase, a huge budget increase, and they're really going to get hot on plant movement. And don't think this isn't going to happen. This is going to happen. Right. So the bottom line, I think, is that we can definitely bank on prices going up of plants. I would have thought so, yes, certainly initially. I mean, at the end of the day, a lot of the plants that are mass-produced in certain countries who I won't mention there it's it's a recipe for disaster with, with pests and diseases because they're literally for, you know, it's like the busy leases with the virus that, that destroyed the whole selection but they are managed to mass produce them at very very cheap rates and you're seeing business models where they don't care if the plants die because they do not sell a return it's trying to sell them off so the quality is poor mm. so you're, you're paying for poor quality basically if you want a plant to last it's like like food you can buy cheap food which isn't particularly good for you um, because everything has a reason why 
the price is the way it is. Something's cheap because there's a reason for mm. it. Something's expensive because there's a reason for it. Same with plants. If the plants are cheap, there's a good reason. They're probably not good quality. They're probably not properly grown. They may have loads of chemicals in them, which if you're trying to do a wildlife garden, is not good. I think a few years ago, when they were pushing wild flowers for bees and what have you, all the mass-produced wildflower plants were riddled with insecticides, pesticides, and everything else, which basically killed the bees. So yeah. what you're doing is buying plants to kill your bees. Yeah. The complete opposite we're trying to do. So again, there's a reason for it. Nothing is cheap. Nothing is free in this world. If something mm. is free, you've got to ask, ask yourself the reason why is that free. Yeah. Nothing comes for free. No, that's very true. And also, I think the, the beauty of trying to stick to British grown or locally grown even is that when you get plants that have been shipped in, mm. A, they've been forced to yes. look really good and quite often they will flop as soon as you try and put them in a normal situation. Yeah. And B, they quite often have a, an explosion of pests or diseases because they've been suppressed to such a great degree when they've been grown yeah, under yeah, glass. They're, they're basically so, drug addicts. Well, yeah. They're, they're, they're the hooks and the fertilisers and the chemicals they've had. And the other thing also, it makes sense, it's in this day and age we're trying to, cut down our plastic use we're trying to cut down our fossil fuel use so if we're buying locally and shopping locally and this doesn't just go for the uk this goes for all the countries to produce their own plants is it's, it's going to be a better thing mm-hmm. because you you're use there's less less air miles there's less lorry miles um you're giving employment to local people it's a craft industry throwing this out there as well the way manufacturing is going with artificial intelligence running machines the way forward for the humans in terms of business is to have more craft individual businesses and we see that with craft beers we see that with little the craft gin things that are opening Mm. up bespoke jewelry people doing handmade and it's the skills it's we're still a long way yet from any ai artificial intelligence being able to be as creative as a human being can be the same with plants if we can have more craft plants shall we say where Mm. little where people have you know one person specializes in hellebores and woodland plants some else specializes in desert plants this can only be good for the industry I agree. Oof, I told you we were in for some dramatic revelations. I hope you found this illuminating, particularly if you're in a position where you may be affected by these issues. A really, really big thank you to Graham for his insight into the world of exotic plants and also the lesser known world of plant imports and the upcoming legislation. Don't forget to check out his website, www.plantbase.co.uk and keep an eye out for Graham at plant fairs and flower shows. He'll be the one with the most dramatic stand in the venue. Thanks for listening and I'll catch you next Tuesday.